Okay, when you speak of people like Soldier Slim, though, man, and you think about just legendary stuff, one of the beautiful things about No Limit is that everybody's leaving out of there a legend, okay? Mm -hmm. Did it feel like everybody was legendary at that time while y'all was in the studio, or was it just a bunch of camaraderie going on, everybody just working together to, you know, push this content out? It was actually the latter. Mm. camaraderie because No Limit it was a family, it was an army, yeah. it was all that. It had, it even had a little friendly competition going on in there because everybody was snapping. Yeah. When you got like, so when Mystical came there and like, oh shit, we got him and Fiend and you know, Kane and they were snapping. Yeah. You got people slept on, slept on the uh, prime suspects and Gambino fan. Yep. They were always snapping. <laughs> Bourbons and legs. Yeah, they yes showed indeed. up on them. You know what I'm saying? Come on. We, absolutely. Full bloody. I Come mean, on. we had nothing but spitters, bro. You know what I'm saying? And then we had some crooners like myself and yes, Sons of Funk. You know what I'm saying? We had Mercedes. We acquired all that energy. Yeah. It was just uh, it was one of the best times of my life as a creator. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To just be around all that family and love, bro. Yeah. We were talking in my in my my cousin the head honcho running it. You know what yeah. I'm talking about? That that was beautiful to see a family business operating at the way it the way it did. So it was, man, it was something I'll never forget and I would cherish for the rest of my life. Honorary uh members of Beats by the Pound. Pimp C. Oh, bro. I mean, was it an instant chemistry when you hooked up with UGK? Well, now that that's that story I'm a, is told in that book as mm. well. But you know, just to give you the uh, the gist of it, yeah. You know, I met them that you know through my fraternity brother, uh, EW3 Ernest Walters, yeah, and my cousin Merrick, who was my former business partner because we I had a record label that partnered with him. Yeah, it was called. Uh, uh, starving artist entertainment, you know what I'm saying? Slash Cobra Steady Records, you know okay. what I'm saying? So, you know, through that, when I left to go, when I left Morgan City, because I had gotten some trouble and stuff like that, yeah. some some legal stuff, left there so I can get my life together, mm -hmm. went to Wichita, Kansas, and, you know, told my, my cousin, hey man, run the business. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That song, you got a 100%, don't wait on me. Yeah. But I'm here if you need me. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, what he did, he went, you know, started venturing off into promoting shows. Yeah. And our favorite group at that time was UGK. Mm. Especially from that, what was that, uh, that tell me something <laughs> good. Yeah. That right there, that Come album on. right there, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That album right there, I forgot the title super of it. Tight. Super Tight. No, no, before that. Before Super Tight. It, it, it was the album, it was, a, it, was a, it was a cassette that they put out prior to Too My Hard God. to Swallow. Yeah, and then it eventually became too hard to swallow. Okay, you know I know saying? what you're talking about. But I forgot. I can't think of it. I have a brain fart right now. So I mm. can't think of the title of that album. But uh, straight out of Port Arthur, Texas, man, which is like right up the highway west. It's like east, like that part of Texas, is like Beaumont, Port Arthur, Texas City. We consider that West Louisiana. You mm. know what I'm saying? So you know. But anyway, my cousin had, you know. He had acquired them and built a relationship with them mm -hmm. when he booked them to do a show in Thibodeau, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And from that, he built a rapport with them. Uh, a fraternity brother, he was the manager at the time for uh, for Critical Condition, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people call it C.C. Waterbound. Yeah. And uh, so hired them to be ghostwriter, going to be a ghostwriter, uh, Pimp C to be, do some production. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, when I was in Kansas, uh, Mary reached out to me and was like, say, bro, you know, this whole CC Waterbound critical condition, this you the brainchild of this, man. You know, we I can't do this, this shit without you, so I need you. You told me if I need you, mm -hmm. call you. So I'm calling you right now. Come on. So flew me out to Dallas and, you know, connected with those guys, and we built a rapport there, and it was an instant, you know, brotherhood right there because so much respect for each other. Cause the guys Merrick and and Ernest and all the guys uh, Marlon and all them man, shout out to Marlon Haynes out there. He um they talked about me so much to Pimp C and Bun, mm -hmm. so it was like they already knew me, and I already knew them. You know what I'm saying from when yeah. we met, and we just hit it off, man. 
And from that, you know, I delivered that later on to No Limit from that affiliation. Okay. 